This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business and Politics Daily. I'm Roby Brock. Glad to have you with us. We are going to be talking health care today. November is American Diabetes Month, Wednesday, November 14th, World Diabetes Day. I have two experts in the field with me on this from the Arkansas Foundation for Medical Care, Dr. Chad Rogers and Mary Gupton. Thank you very much for being here. Both Thank of you me. appreciate it. So, um, Mary, I'll come to you first because okay. you've got... Um, You've got blood somewhere around here, and I don't want to see it just yet, but uh, tell me there are different types of diabetes. Tell me about the different levels of diabetes and why it is so important to raise awareness about this. Uh, there are three types of diabetes. Type 1, which is uh, uh, the diabetes that, uh, that a younger group, I mean, they, they don't have any insulin. They can't produce any insulin, whereas type 2 diabetes they can produce just a little, but not enough to really, you know, suffice the insulin uh, within the body. And then we have gestational diabetes, which is normally during the pregnancy range. Yeah. And I think Dr. Chad can probably elaborate a little bit more on that being with this. Yeah, what are some of the uh, health effects that happen when somebody has any one of these levels of diabetes? Right, so if your blood sugar runs high all the time, your body just isn't using energy like it's supposed to, and that leads to a lot of long-term and often costly complications. So you think about things like uh, high cholesterol as a result of diabetes, and that, which leads to you know coronary artery disease, or vascular disease, um, you're talking about heart attacks and just you know blood flow to your kidneys and to your uh, your feet. So you often end up getting what's called nephropathy. So you can't feel things in your feet. It also can affect your vision. Uh, you can end up getting um, getting blindness. In fact, it's one of the leading causes of blindness in our country. Um, it's not a curable disease, but it's a treatable disease. First of all, Chad, tell me why is it not? curable. Why won't we find a cure for diabetes? Yet? Right. Well, so we have, you know, two types of diabetes, so there's two different cures there. And so uh, the first one, type 1, is, you know, it's nobody's fault. It sort of has some genetic and some environmental things. Uh, there's a really strong uh, effort to find a cure for diabetes, but until then we know it's very treatable. Type 2, di type two diabetes is very preventable, uh, although there are some genetic influences. Often your weight affects your, um, the, whether you develop type 2 or not, but even people of a normal, healthy weight can develop um, something called pre-diabetes, which I think we're hearing a lot more mm -hmm. about. Um, so it's where your blood sugar is starting to get elevated, but it's not high enough to cause type 2, but it's not normal. So those people, if they get identified earlier, may be able to do some things um, through nutrition and exercise mm -hmm. in order to control their blood sugars and maybe prevent the early onset of diabetes and push it down the road some. So Mary, what, what are some things, he's hinted to a few things, what, what's treatable about diabetes? You talk to a lot of people a lot yes, about how to manage right. their diabetes. And, and more so with type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. Uh, uh, AFMC actually provides a class, uh, six-week workshop class that will allow individuals to know, learn how to manage their, their uh, diabetes and mainly to control the blood sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, also how to look at ways to exercise because a lot of times when we talk about exercise they think well I got to join a gym and we say no you can exercise right there at home I mean we actually have tools developed where an individual can sit in their chair and do exercise. Now, that's we want my them to kind move. of exercise right there. <laughs> if I can sit in a chair and do exercise. Yeah, yeah. Well any kind of movement we just want them to move um, and uh, it's, it's very interactive the class that we have uh, where individuals can be able to see visuals and like you mentioned earlier I have the blood and I got to show this because a lot of times <laughs> you know people with diabetes they don't want to take their blood sugars in the morning so we want to make sure you know your numbers know what your blood look like when the uh, sugar is high and so forth so you Dr. You Chan, can, get can that you reach my bag? Right. I like showing the my bag goodies. Is. I love showing now my goodies. Now this is not real blood. This is not real blood <laughs> um, and it's a, an eye opener we have blood levels at 100. When you take your blood sugar level and it's 100 mm -hmm. or below 200, notice how your blood just flow right. back and forth. That's what we want. Okay. That's what we want your blood sugar to look like. When it reached 200, notice how it's begin to just really get thick. Mm -hmm. And this is what we don't want. We don't okay. want your blood sugar sure. to get 200 and above because notice that when your blood is that thick, the heart is having to pump so hard 
to try to get blood to the circle to, throughout your circulation system. for you to pick up 400. Oh, four, <laughs> four, you're not even moving at all. Okay. So imagine the pressure that you put in on your heart. This is where we talk about high blood pressure. And when we notice that uh, diabetes is a risk factor for heart disease, this mm -hmm. is why, because your blood sugar is so high, it's at 400, two and 400, until the heart has to pump so hard to reach out into the Arkansas system. is out of the norm with diabetes. Uh, nationally, about 9.7% of Americans mm. have diabetes of one of these uh, two different types. Mm. In Arkansas, we're about 15%. 15%. Why, why are we so much higher? A lot has to do with, you know, just management, you know. Uh, and then when you look at the southern states, we don't want to talk about diet. We don't want to talk about when it comes to That's food right. and how we like our fried chicken or, you know, the ham hocks and the greens or what have you. But uh, we really have to look at our carbohydrate intake. You know, a lot of people don't realize that the bread, the pasta, the and all those tea. things. <laughs> the sweet tea. We love our sweet tea here in the south. You know, that has a lot to do with it. And not so much just the physical realm of it when we look at hereditary. You know, this is a family affair because once it reaches it in a family, then you know you're yeah. going to have that trickle effect. Uh, is the state doing enough from a policy perspective to address this? There's certainly an, a, a lot of awareness of it, and there mm -hmm. is a, I guess, a little bit of a mandate that you, you're going to have to manage this yourself. This is not something you can take a pill for. It's not right. something that uh, a doctor or nurse mm -hmm. or a health practitioner can make you do it. Uh, but do we have enough? Um, focus on it from a policy perspective. Right. Well, I think we one of the things that Arkansas has done very well is just through the expansion of health care, we've increased access to, for people to go to get their doctors. And it, it, part of that expansion is that they get routine health care and their preventable health care. And part of that preventative health care is getting your blood sugar checked and getting right. your hemoglobin A1C checked. So that's one thing that Arkansas has done well. I think the other thing is, um, you know, Healthy Active Arkansas is now out there, you know, trying to push communities to get more active. As Mary said, you know, just getting up and moving and being more active uh, re reduces your need for uh, insulin to, to control your blood sugar. So, um, you know, just anything we can do to increase people's um, health care, to improve people's diet and get them moving and more active is going to help um, control this. You mentioned pre-diabetes. What is pre-diabetes? Pre-diabetes, uh, and I think that Dr. Chad mentioned that uh, when your numbers are pretty much, what, maybe like 6.4, 6.6 on, on your hemoglobin A1C, and that's that, that uh, that third three month uh, blood sugar range. So is that, that a precursor so that you're right. on track to develop diabetes or is that you're, something you can leading. come down to? Right. Or? Those are both two good points. I mean, so you can identify early, your blood sugar is running a little bit high, but you now haven't developed totally t too right. yet. But that, that's a great inter uh, opportunity to intervene and begin to improve your diet and get more active, you know, bring your weight down. And you, you probably will still go on later in life as you get older. You may still develop type 2, but you're going to postpone uh, the, the complications yeah. and, the, and developing sort of those higher blood sugars and putting it later down the road so that you can live a longer, healthier life. If it, if it is hereditary, as you've mentioned here, is there any way to avoid getting diabetes? Well, type 1 is unavoidable, and unfortunately, um, you know, it's probably a lot of times triggered by a viral infection, and you may have some sort of genetic um, predisposition, but on type 2 diabetes, it's pretty preventable, um, you know, just by controlling your weight and having a healthy lifestyle, trying to avoid the sweet tea, <laughs> trying to uh, be more active, um, and again, a very preventable uh, disease. All right. Uh, if somebody wants more information about National Diabetes Month or diabetes control in general, where, where would you send them, Mary? Uh, I would, we would definitely love to, for them to call the AFMC 1-800 number, and that's 1-877-650-2362. Okay. Uh, and we uh, train a lot of individuals in the state throughout. We have over 100 uh, educators that we train to teach diabetes education. So uh, if anyone that is interested in getting on board. You can start November the 14th on, okay. you know, uh, so Diabetes Awareness Day. So if they call, what, what, they're going to talk to someone. They're just going to get steered They're just going to get their information. Okay. And, and they will share with them uh, what classes are available in their county. All right. I'll give you the last word, Dr. Rogers. All right. I would say stay active, stay healthy. Uh, push that diabetes down the road. And uh, it's not just you. There's most likely somebody in your life mm -hmm. that has diabetes and they need your love and support to be healthy too. All right. Chad, Mary, thank you both. Thank much you. for being here. Thank Appreciate you, it. Uh -huh. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. You'll find us at the end of a lot of long country roads, covering over 60% of the great state of Arkansas. Our 17 electric distribution cooperatives 
are working day and night to provide reliable, affordable power to over half a million homes, farms, and businesses just like yours. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, your local energy partners. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me.